Modern Warfare 3 is finally here and everybody wants to get the competitive edge. So here are all the very best settings that you're going to want to be using in Modern Warfare 3. Now, first things first, before you even boot up Modern Warfare 3, let's make sure that you've got your console properly set up. So you're going to get the most frames possible. Here at Xbox On, we never leave a frame behind. Hit the Nexus button on your controller and head over to your profile tab Select settings, then go to TV and display options. First, make sure your resolution is correctly set. This will obviously depend on the capabilities of the TV or monitor that you're using, but keep in mind that most professional Call of Duty players are at 1440p, so ideally, that's what you're looking for. Next, let's sort your refresh rate. If your screen can handle 120 hertz, you'll get the benefits of up to 120 frames per second, which could give you the edge in multiplayer. And if you're not 100% sure what your display supports, just go to select 4K TV details and it'll tell you. Now that you've done that, you're going to want to load up Modern Warfare 3 and get stuck into the game settings by pressing the menu button on your controller. Now, we're going to start with your controller settings. Although bear in mind that your Xbox Series S or Series X does provide mouse and keyboard support, which is what Sam uses every time we stream Call of Duty on the channel, and he seems to do all right, most of the time. But if you are using a controller, the first step is to choose your button layout. Now, most pro players use the tactical layout, which turns your right stick into change stance and turns B into melee. This way you can move around the map without taking your thumb off the thumbstick. Diving and sliding as much as possible is the best way to make yourself hard to hit in Call of Duty, especially now that Modern Warfare 3 has added the ability to cancel any action. So this setup can be highly effective and is what most pro players are going to be running. Next, you will want to leave flip off. Stick layout preset as default and then have your controller vibration set to off. As though it can feel kind of cool, that vibration is going to have an impact on your aim. Getting your dead zones just right is now easier than ever before thanks to Modern Warfare 3's dead zone tester. The goal here is to get both the horizontal and vertical axis on zero when you're not touching your controller, but have the left and right stick min as low as possible so that they are as reactive as they can possibly be. I personally have it down to a 5-5 before I start to see a slight amount of stick drift. With that done, hit the right bumper and head across to aiming, which is where you'll be able to select your sensitivity. As a rule of thumb, you'll want to have your horizontal and vertical sensitivity set to the same. A higher sensitivity will give you a far more reactive input, but less total control, while a low one won't be as reactive, but will offer more control and allow you to handle recoil far better. The majority of pro players tend to run a lower sensitivity, with players like Jukies and myself running a 5.5, with the ADS sensitivity multiplier then being dropped to a 0.8 to give you far more control when you go to aim down sight. Next, head down to your aim response curve type and set this to dynamic, as this helps you take advantage of in-game mechanics like aim assist far better than the default setting. Then you'll also want to change your ADS sensitivity, transition timing to instant. Next, in the aim assist section, make sure you've got target aim assist turned on. I've seen people accidentally turn these off before and it makes things a lot more difficult. You'll also want to have aim assist type set to black ops. Okay. Now that you're shooting straight, press RB once again to head to gameplay and we'll get the rest of your movements tightened up. You'll want to have automatic sprint set to automatic tactical sprint. This is just going to make sure you're maximizing that movement buff that you get from the automatic tax sprint when it comes off cooldown. You should also turn grounded mantle off as this will allow you to snake a piece of cover without triggering a mantle, which is effectively going from standing to prone really quickly. Automatic airborne mantle should be partial and auto ground should also be set to off. Make sure your slide slash dive behavior is set to tap to slide. Plunging underwater, you'll want to set to free and sprinting door bash should be turned on. Ledge climb behavior, you'll want as movement based and slide cancel sprint should also be turned on. Then for combat behaviors, make your way down to weapon mount exit delay and turn this to instant. Tactical stance activation, which is a new feature in Modern Warfare 3, I'd recommend changing to ADS plus melee so it's easier to toggle depending on the situation that you find yourself in. 
The tactical stance behavior option should then be on toggle. Interact slash reload behavior should be set to prioritize interact when you're playing zombies on Warzone. But if you're playing multiplayer, then I'd suggest having it as tap to reload so you don't accidentally pick up enemy weapons as easily. Your armor plate behavior can be changed to apply all, but your vehicle behavior doesn't require any tuning at all. So just stick with the default settings here. All right, what's going on guys? It's Sam here. Look, if you didn't know already, you can use mouse and keyboard natively across all of the Call of Duty game modes. I love games on controller, but frankly, I'm just a lot better at cards on mouse and keyboard due to all my years as a PC gamer. But thankfully, the integration is great on next-gen consoles. And look, I, I personally find 60 hertz can be a bit of a struggle on mouse and keyboard, but once you crank it up to 120 hertz on Series X and S, you get this sort of buttery aiming experience that feels seamless. Anyway, in my experience, here are a few good specific mouse and keyboard tips. The first one that I do is I change control to be bound to crouch slash slide. Slide cancelling's back massively in this and changing it away from change stance ensures that I'm not dolphin diving by accident when I actually mean to slide cancel. The next one is I keep prone slash dive specifically bound to shift, which replaces sprint, but given I'm playing with auto tactical sprint on, you know, then I'm all good. If you want to keep sprint bound to something though, I recommend something like the C key, which will keep you going. Now, I know this could sound complicated, but once you get used to them and use them to their maximum ability, you'll start to get a rhythm of better movement and therefore more kills and therefore more wins. And the last one is I have melee bound to side mouse button so you can box up your opponent without taking your hand off the movement keys. And if you have another side button or a middle mouse button, I assign that to ping or mount, whichever your preferences are. Anyway, back to you, Penny. Next, pop the left trigger this time and head to the graphic settings. Here, you'll want to make sure that world and weapon motion blur are turned off and film grain is set to zero. Depth of field should also be off and then fidelity should be on at 100 strength. And no, you don't actually need to know what most of those words mean, just they're the best options for you. Next, head down to view and make sure that you have 120 hertz refresh rate turned on if your display allows for it. Field of view is kind of a personal preference, but I'd suggest setting it anywhere between 105 and 110. I personally use 110. First and third person camera movement should be set to least 50%. Now, here's a big tip that a lot of people don't know about. Select your safe area and bring it as far in as you possibly can, decreasing the height and width all the way. This makes it far easier for you to quickly glance and see your minimap or ammo count. Vital information in the heat of the moment. Hit that left trigger once again to take us over to audio. Make sure that your master volume is set to 100, gameplay music is set to zero, dialogue is 30, effects volume, which is footsteps and gunshots at 100, and then cinematic music volume set to zero. This way you'll hear all the really gameplay important stuff crystal clear. Finally, hit the left trigger one last time and select interface. Head down to color customization, select enemy, and change the hex to FF. 05 ff to turn it into a bright pink this is a great little trick that makes it way easier to spot enemies on both your minimap and hud with that done you now officially have the best settings that modern warfare 3 has to offer on xbox series x and series s